All right, so we are back home and a lot to do. First things first, I need to work on the car still. So what I need to do is this has a solar panel built into it from the factory. Now the solar panel runs a small fan in the interior that keeps the interior cooler. Um, I found online where you could hook it up to the battery through a solar charger and top up your battery. I also have a lithium battery in here that I installed. So it's been doing that, but I've had a couple times where <laughs> the battery is fine, the battery is charged, but the car won't start which is exactly what happened to us last week. So what I'm thinking is that I'm getting an over voltage issue because of the solar panel and the solar charger. And I think that's causing an issue with the internal electrical system. That is causing, you know, one of the computers to mess up or something. And that was why we had that issue last week. Because I charged up the battery. It still didn't want to start. I disconnected it uh, for a few minutes. Then reconnected it. Everything worked perfectly. So I think that's what's going on. There's some computer or relay or something that is not happy. So... Um, I do also have a battery charger hooked up because this is lithium, the car doesn't charge it in the same way. So it turns the car basically into a plug-in hybrid. So I have this for right now that I just plug in every once in a while. And I have a thing that I'm putting into the bumper so that I'll have a, a little plug port there. Well, actually it'll be right up here but anyways that's got to be done eventually I need to get the hole saw to cut the little hole there and then um, so yeah all I need to do is get back here so I've got everything tucked and hidden so just a few 10 millimeter bolts and we can pull that forward and I can take that out so I'm gonna get on it That actually should be enough. I guess I'll take that. I'm going to put the seats. I just need a little bit more. So, that pops up and off. New cars are pretty easy these days. A lot of stuff just like pops up and then out lots of little clips and stuff like that there we go there. easy peasy lemon squeezy all right let's see here i mean it shows us happy load on all that kind of stuff but i'm just gonna gonna undo it for right now. It just worries me that it's not, it might not be stopping or something and it's just letting it go too much, you know, eventually. So like right now it says 14.2, which 12.8, it's really not supposed to be that high. 
and I have seen it higher, so I'm thinking this charge controller might have an issue, or the battery itself might have an issue. Uh, you never do know, so I'm just going to start eliminating issues from the system as possibilities, and we'll go from there. So the other thing, too, is if I ever want to hook this up, I'm just going to cap these off for right now and leave them back there that way. If I ever want to put a new one in, revisit it eventually, I can. So after I get done doing this, then I am going to get it charged fully, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. <laughs> so last week, I did not charge the car beforehand, so that could have played a part in it. Um, who knows? So. Again, I've had this before, not just last week, but one other time, and so I'm just basically covering my bases. I would not like to be stuck with the kids. This is coming from the solar panel, the wire that I ran up to it. The battery disconnected, this just runs to the battery. Tessa tape. This is an actual automotive electrical tape. Not that junk you find in most stores. Then we'll do the other one. trickle charge but I do not like the idea of getting stuck places so you know it might be back feeding through the system or something I'm not really sure so until I can fully investigate it and figure it all out I'm just going to strike it from the system so I'll get those zip tied and nice this is actually for the trailer I got the wiring all done for the trailer and come to find out this thing's taking a crap on me and it's only about two years old so I had it all nice and, and uh, secured and zip tied and all that kind of stuff and I took it out so I could test it and sure enough all the inputs are good no outputs so the box itself so gotta get one of those on order that's sixty dollars so. <laughs> Selling plants just to spend money, right? That's the way it goes. Alright, so I get this zip tied up, get it put back together real quick, leave that there. So, just getting everything disconnected and put away and stuff right now. Disconnecting the trailer setup since it's got to be replaced anyway. So I have just cut this for right now, took out the fuse so that's not live. I will hook that up to the next one, comes with the same exact setup. So, deal. Get this unplugged. And uh, Jimmy's into the factory setup, which is pretty cool. There's no cutting or splicing of any of the factory stuff. That's a big plus. I do not like to cut wires if I don't have to. Alright, the other one is all the way over here. To this other side. For the other turn signal, basically. It unplugged. I think <laughs> I might have to completely take apart this whole other side here to get this out because I know I've got it all screwed. 
free to get the uh, zip tie and stuff. Yeah. For sure. I'll at least have to take this corner apart. Alright, uh, we'll just take the two, two 10 mils. So I have a bit of a background in mechanics and automotive. Um, I do a lot of custom wiring and stuff, so I'm used to this kind of stuff. Uh, I take cars apart every day for years on end, you know. Taking them apart and putting stereos in and custom lights and lifts and performance and all kinds of fun stuff. So. Yeah, see there's the little plug for that side. Take it all out and show you here. Alright, so that runs over to that box. And you got your little your little jumper harness and ground. This one went to the power. And then this has all the relays and all that kind of stuff in it. And then that runs to four wire trailer plug and that's it real simple but this went bad so we'll throw it away get the other one ordered and we'll get it put in but for now I'm gonna get all this put back together so the trunk looks decent and usable we'll just start right in reverse order put this side right back together old things they just they just fall apart There's so many pieces it sucks clips and stuff like that they just break over time you know uh, it's real hard to keep this stuff perfect uh, the more it gets used the more it gets worked on the quicker they'll go bad so, it's just a matter of time <laughs> sometimes all right so. that's why I have some of these tools that I do like this snap on drill forward and backwards all at once you don't have to press any buttons it's got a quick detach and that's why this is the way it is so this is a 10 mil socket uh, quick detach extension and it's ma magnetic so when you're working inside of a car you know inside dashboards and stuff like that and getting screws out these are absolutely necessary and I have small ones too that are little small extensions that all have their own different socket on there so I have like a five and a half a seven and eight I have a quarter inch, uh, a 10 mil, you know, I have all the different sizes. So instead of having just a bunch of little uh, sockets rolling around, easy to lose, they're on their own extensions and everything. I just unplug it, plug the new one back in, ready to go to work. So when it comes to automotive, it's all about time savings. Um, and so the more time you can save, the better. So as you see, Nice to have. Helpful hands. And then this thing is just ridiculously light too. And that's another thing, you know, saving your, uh, basically just making sure that you don't run out of energy and stuff. You know, these things get heavy over time, especially the heavier they are. Some of these things weigh two or three times what this one does. And so, you know, it's expensive, but it's worth the money. Definitely worth the money. Alright, so this is left loose as of right now because it goes out and I get to plug it in, you know. Uh, but eventually this will be plugged into the adapter that I have that will all be back here. And like I was saying, it will be on the outside of the car here and I can just plug my extension cord into there. I won't have to open the car or any of that kind of stuff. So, that would be nice. There we go. 
All right. So the battery was another thing that I modified. They do not come with lithium batteries. They come with nickel metal halide batteries. And so that took a little bit of, of work. Uh, this is a 100 amp hour battery, which is the biggest one I've ever seen in a Prius. Especially at a third gen like mine. Um, as you can see, it's kind of on an angle. They're usually supposed to be flat. It's just because of the size of the battery. The reason that I put the lithium in is for better gas mileage and also for extended range. I had a, a battery that was going bad and it was already causing me issues. So you, you will get stuck in these cars if, you know, just like any car, if your regular battery goes bad. This has two batteries. So, as you can see, the other battery, which you can actually see right here, this is the hybrid battery, the high voltage battery. Uh, this actually has like around 240 volts, kind of like what is in your car, or I'm sorry, in your house. And uh, this does most of the work for a lot of the uh, things in the car, like the air conditioning, um, power steering, all kinds of stuff. So the regular battery, uh, actually that runs the starter and everything too, to start the motor. So the regular battery doesn't do a whole lot. The regular battery just uh, starts up the initial phase, uh, gets the computers up and going, stuff like that, and tells that battery and the whole system, okay, we're ready to go. And so this does a lot of the work. Um, there's no alternator in this car per se, um, like a normal car. So normal cars have, uh, or should I say a gas powered car, they have an alternator that's attached to it and is run by that gas engine. This has a gas engine, but it also has electric motors, two to be specific. Most people think there's just one, there's actually two. Uh, one, they both do drive, but one is mostly for drive and one is mostly for charging. And so when the car needs to charge, that motor kicks in and does what it's supposed to do, just like an alternator. Uh, the issue that comes in is this is also not a lithium battery. Lithium wasn't in cars uh, when this one was first made. So this is also nickel metal halide. Um, the next generation up from this, I think starting in 2014, which this is a 2010. 2014, they started putting in lithium batteries. Um, but anyways, they have aftermarket lithium upgrades, all kinds of stuff, yada yada. I'm not even gonna get into that, but the difference, so with putting this lithium ion battery in, the car doesn't really understand what's going on as much. And here's the reason why. So with nickel metal halide, uh, when a battery is full, it's at 12.6 volts. When the car is running and charging, the alternator is going, it's anywhere from 13.6 to 14.6, roundabout, okay? So it would be the same with this car, with the nickel metal halide, that's what's expected. Now those batteries, as they run out of charge, the voltage goes down, 12.6, 12.5, 12.4, 12.3, you know, it just slowly degrades and that's what tells uh, the alternator to kick on. You know, it sees a certain voltage and the voltage regulator says, hey, it's too low, let's let's do our thing. And that system comes to life, it does its thing, it charges it up, everybody's happy. That's what's supposed to happen here. Lithium ion is different. So with a lithium ion battery, they hold that charge, that voltage, basically all the way until it's dead. So 
when it's right at the point of dying, then that's when it finally falls off. That's not good. So, basically, when I have this battery in the car, the car doesn't charge. The alternator doesn't do anything. Now, that serves two purposes. One, that's not good. <laughs> Obviously, you know, uh, long term for the battery if you don't have it charging in some way, shape, or form. Um, but it also makes it so that the car does not run its alternator. Now, what that does is actually increases the gas mileage for me. So I get anywhere from four to six miles to the gallon better gas mileage by having a lithium battery in here versus the nickel metal halide. But what is the offset? What is the thing that I'm losing? Or, you know, you've got a gain, what's the problem? What, what are you losing in exchange? Well, it's kind of like any electric vehicle. So like a Tesla, for, exist, for example. If you drive a Tesla, it doesn't have a gas engine, right? You never have to put gas in it. But what do you have to do? You gotta plug it in at some point in time, right? So this is kind of that same thing. So what this does by putting a lithium battery into it is it turns it into a plug-in hybrid. So really, you need to plug it in from time to time, preferably every day or two, you know, but you have to plug it in. Now, this car did not come as a plug-in from the factory. So there's a whole nother thing. How do you get around that? How do you charge it? How do you do that? Well, I bought a charger. So I have a five amp lithium or nickel metal halide charger. I've got it hidden right in the back quarter panel here. And that's where this goes to. So this chart, you know, turns on the charger that then trickle charges the battery. And that's my plug-in uh, Prius, basically. Uh, and then, like I said, this will be attached to an adapter that is going to come out of the back here. And so it'll be a nice little flush plug. Plug it in at the end of the day. It doesn't need to be charged up every day. That's one thing about the 100 amp hours is unless you're going a thousand miles in a day, you don't need to charge it every day. But it does need to be charged. So good practice is to just plug it in every day. But really every two or three days, it depends on you know how far you're going. Um, and that, back to the whole solar thing, was why I had the solar panel. So I don't use this very often. I, I don't need to go into town much. Um, I don't need to take the kids to school or any of that kind of stuff. You know, the bus picks them up right outside the house. So I don't want it to drive very often. So what I was thinking was instead of having to plug in, I would just let the solar panel do its thing and just trickle charge it for me. And that way the little bit that I do use it, it'll never be dead. And it worked out pretty darn good for a long time. Um, but then, like I said, one day I just got in and had to go somewhere and nothing. Like, the whole car starts, the air conditioner runs, the radio turns on, everything goes, except the engine doesn't start. And that's something that has to happen right in the beginning. So it sends a signal to start the engine, all that kind of stuff, and that's what allows everything to keep going. And since it didn't get that signal, it won't go into drive. It won't do anything. It won't move. And so you get stuck. You know, and it was just the one time I reset it. Hadn't had a problem again. And now, what, two months later, we had it again. And of course, <laughs> at the market, you know. So I don't want to have that issue again. So we'll just. Get rid of that solar issue. We'll plug it in from now on and then no more problems. 
My guess is that the BMS inside the solar charger uh, deal might just not, it either doesn't work with the battery, or it went bad, or the battery could be bad, and is letting itself be overcharged, I don't know, I don't know, but the best way to diagnose that is to slowly take out aftermarket stuff one at a time, especially if you don't need it. I don't need that right now. So, first form of diagnosis, delete. Delete! 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 <laughs> delete possible issues. So, Alright. Back to putting this thing back together. As you see, very easy. Very easy to put back together. Most of it's just clips. This clips into that, and this clips into that, and that claps into this. And this wire out easy peasy lemon squeezy <sighs> gotta love it it looks nice in factory you'd never know Lift it up, get your plug, plug it in. Same with the trailer harness. Usually I have the trailer harness just sitting there as well. So it runs out just like that. And I can plug in the trailer. So. Yay! So now that that's done, we will get the banner back in there so we can put that in that up tomorrow and then on to the next thing.